and a very warm welcome to the Women's Rugby Pod. I'm Johnny Hammond and we've got another brilliant show lined up for you today. Reflecting on everything around the globe from Women's Rugby, we've got the Wales captain, Bristol Bears number eight, show. And Lily Crap is joining us on the pod to talk about Bristol's unbelievable start to the season. What's changed there? How integrated they are being as a club. We've also got Sonia Green better known as Sonic, the lady who made her 300th appearance for Saracens at the weekend. We needed to mark that uh, unbelievable milestone and Sonic is coming on the pod a little bit later on. There's some other exciting news here on the WRP. We've got a new member of the team, Nandi Butelezi. Some of you may have known her from presenting Women's Rugby Roundup show on SABC down in South Africa in Johannesburg. Yeah, she's been getting across women's rugby down in South Africa and she's going to be doing some news reading for us, our very own Moira Stewart. Uh, She's also a community sports journalist, really. Uh, That's her her day job. Um, And she's got some great energy and is really, really looking forward to to being involved in the pod. And we're hugely looking forward to her being involved as well. Andy is going to bring you all the international news a little bit later on in the pod. But let's get straight to the Bristol number eight, to Wales captain, Shoan Lillycrap. It is a very, very warm welcome to Shoan Lillycrap um, from Bristol Bears and also the, the Wales captain. Good morning, Shoan. How are you? Good, thanks, Johnny. Thanks for having me on. Well, I mean, it's what, second time now, so you're officially in that bracket of Fender the Pod. I love it. <laughs> Pop that on the CV, genuinely. Right yeah. up there, I'm sure, with all your other accolades. It'll be on my bio now by later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get in touch with Wikipedia. How, how's things yeah. with you? Um, you're, you're a busy lady, uh, as ever, no doubt. Club, country, day job, all the rest of it. How's, how's everything going? Yeah, very good. Um, it's obviously lovely to be in a win- winning camp in Bears and a great start uh, to the season. We couldn't have asked for a better start, really. So, you know, that always helps. Um, yeah, work super busy with uh, university starting back and really normality in university and student life for the first time in 18 months. So that's busy. And then obviously kicking back into Welsh camp now ahead of autumn. So an exciting, busy time ahead. Yeah, awesome. Um, what um, you coach at Cardiff University? Swansea right? Uni. Z. Swansea. Oh, oh. Yeah. How yeah. dare I? What blast? I know. Don't let anyone hear uh, you say that. <laughs> no, editor, editor, put, cut that bit out. Cut that bit out. Yeah. Um, I, I'm what, I'm what do you do there? Just for the, for those that, that that don't know. I'm head of rugby for Swansea University. So look after men's and women's programs, really from participation up to high performance so a bit of everything really i know it's properly full on then yeah yeah it is but it's really rewarding you know you get to work with really 18 to 21 year olds maybe some more mature students but you know in their prime of their life really and uh you know a lot of people a lot of those individuals want to be pro rugby players so give them the opportunity to to leave us with a degree but hopefully a rugby career as well alongside that so yeah it's a it's a rewarding job yeah huge reward I mean, you know, coaching and working with people i always think is uh yeah incredibly rewarding stuff but i mean I, it's not a road i particularly want to, want to go down but it's kind of it's an open goal how on earth do you fit that in being an international club rugby player as well I mean, what, what time do you get up like three in the morning yeah uh yeah lack of sleep is definitely something that um, I have, but yeah, earlier, early start really to catch up on admin and get, uh, you know, everything in um, coaching evenings that I'm not training myself, essentially. So, you know, it is a long, long days and um, a lot of things to fit in. But yeah, the reality is probably family and personal life suffers that my time is consumed with work and playing rugby myself. And that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> Yep, rugby, rugby, twenty four seven, wall to wall. Well, let, yeah. let's get into yeah, let's get into um, the club stuff, which is what yeah, well, we got you mainly on uh, today. Bristol Bears, um, an unbelievable start to the season. Five 
five perfect start, five points in the back. At the weekend, gone to the home of the champions and I, I would say stuffed them, but was it twenty four five? That's yeah. that's not a bad that's not a bad result considering also it was a, it was um, five all at half time and then you come on and look at the sc- change of the scoreline. <laughs> yeah, no, you know it was a it was a great game of rugby to be honest, and you know uh, first half it was it was neck and neck, and you know credit to to Harlequins as well with throwing everything up bears to, during that time, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was a full squad effort, to be fair. The, you know, I think 1 to, to 23 contributed and, and performed to, to that result. So, um, I, you know, it's for me, it's super exciting over where we can go as as Bears women. You know, it's a pleasure to to play for Bears at the moment. And, you know, we're loving training, the environment. And, you know, to be fair, that's credit to, to Dave and Tom, but also to Pat Lamb in, you know, putting women's rugby on his radar and overseeing our programme as well. So, you know, it's a great place to be at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I we'll, we'll get into the, sort of the, the, the more of the details of the personnel and the squad, however, but, but I, it, it, it's no surprise that those clubs that are, that are more integrated into the, the full programme, and let's not go down the route of mirroring the men exactly in premiership and da-da, that's a, that's a discussion for another day, but, it does strike me that those clubs that are that are, are, are not rubber stamped but properly integrated, like yourselves, like the Exeter Harlequins, you know, are, are those teams that are, are much much nearer the, the 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 top of the table. That that comes as no surprise to, to people onlookers. Is that is that the same view you hold as well? Yeah, I think so. You know, we've seen a huge shift this year um, in moving to the high performance centre, and obviously, you know, Dave working somewhat with the men's as well and I guess picking up things and you know being overseen by by Pat and you know his vision and drive filtering down to the club and I, I think that is that is massive you know with so much learnings that have happened but you know the reality is we've had a couple of great sign-ins in in um, Abby Ward and Leanne who's obviously been injured for the start of the season but then you know a couple of others but apart from that we're exactly the same squad so I think you know that shows how an environment good coaching and um, good culture throughout you know can really transform a side and um, the reality is we're enjoying playing this Bristol style of, of rugby where we're excited to develop and learn and you know we when we go out there on game day you know we're, we're always concentrating and when we face Quinns the weekend it was always about us our game plan and what we can do and that that paid off off massively and you know I think as players now we have confidence in our game plan and and what we're doing on the training field and um I think that helps then on game day when you're going in and you're really buying into what's being implemented it almost seems seamless and it's you know it, it, it you don't worry then about about the results because you're concentrating on yourself and uh, the result speaks for itself then after that yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, some some real clarity and, and vision from the top, and you know, um, come across Pat quite a lot in 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 my job. And yeah, you you certainly do what you what he asks you to do. He's uh, he's he's uh, he's a chap. I'm brilliant motivator of people and um, has a, a great great vision. And, and Bissler totally bought into it. It looks like you guys have, have as well. So let's get into the the, the personnel. You you mentioned um, Abby and Leanne there. Um, and Leanne back in, I think she's back in, uh, back into England yeah. squad this week and what have you. Um, congratulations on the nuptials. Um, yeah. It is. So, um, but it's not just that. I mean, uh, plenty spoken about the, the likes of Ava Reed and, and Sarah Byrne when he did last season. But it's more than that, isn't it? It's more than just getting a, a couple of decent players. There seems to be, and, and excuse the cliche, but everybody's singing off the same hymn sheet with, is that a fair comment? Yeah, I think you've got a spot on, Johnny. You know, obviously those girls are outstanding players and bring a level of professionalism, but also standards and, you know, raise the standards within our environment. You know, Sarah Byrne turning from injury is getting better and better each game. Scarily better, actually. Absolutely, you know, a, tr- a, a line break and her feet and her offload the weekend. But, you know, that was just one example, to be honest, of... Um, an all-round outstanding performance from her. So, you know, I think obviously those girls drive the standards, but um, 
the reality is everyone else is buying into to those standards and you know we're bouncing off each other well the want and need for individuals us as individuals to get better but also try new things and, and be brave in how we're playing and, and what we're trying in training and um you know that's that's absolutely key you know we're, we feel like we can express ourselves as players and uh you know, if we do make mistakes in the training field, that, that's OK, because we're trying things and we're being brave in how we're playing. I think that is, you know, sh shining through in performance. So that obviously, again, co comes from comes from the top, comes from com from from Dave Ward, who's, who's come in mm -hmm. um, as head coach. What what does he bring? I mean, that's an obvious, probably a too obvious question after what you just said, but but allows you to, to express yourselves. Um but, but just sort of sum him up as a as a coach because he's fairly new to it. Yeah, but you know, if you were in our environment, you wouldn't think Dave is fairly new to it. You know, he okay. he's obviously a hugely experienced player himself. He's yeah. got a huge amount of knowledge of the game. Um, I find the way he analyzes the game really really interesting. Um, he instills a lot of confidence in us as players. You know, he backs us as players and um, is an extremely supportive coach, which which helps. Um, you know, you know, he's very open. We can go to him at, at any point. And to be honest, like, he always goes above and beyond. And uh, with the amount of work he puts in, the level of detail that is there, but also how he managed to capture us as as players and our engagement and our concentration levels. I find, you know, really, uh, I've never really experienced that before. You know, he manages to to get the room completely and get of us all of us switched on and engaged, which is something um that i've yeah like i was like wow how, how do you manage to get everyone's attention so well but you know i think as well because he's make he makes time for every individual which is 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 huge in a in a team sport and you know how we does he see that I'm, sorry in pat lamb you know pat's around the environment he comes in he knows all of our names as pl women's players as well which is which is massive you know he's taking the time to get to know who each and every one of us and he even comes, you know, like he's seen me in the gym and he'll, he'll say something up at, at a point in a game that I did maybe something really well or how I could do better. And he's he's picked out on what I individually maybe had done, you know. So the level of detail, which even Pat is looking at, makes you feel absolutely valued, you know. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah that's that, that's that's incredible buying, isn't it? As you say, from the, from the from the very, very top. How, how does Dave get your attention there? Does he wear sort of clown shoes or a, a big red nose or something? Play loud well, music I, or white noise or something. Well, you know, the amount of knowledge that bloke has got, he's got some random facts. And at the end, start of every meeting, <laughs> we have like a quiz. And I'm like, Dave, how do you even know this information? Um, but yeah, you know, he's just got some innovative ways of engaging us. We split into groups, you know, it's quick fire stuff, but, you know, it's really cool. And but he must do a lot of reading because he, he knows some random facts. <laughs> Brilliant. He's a, he's a nosy hooker, and that's, that's no bad thing. Don't um, you know? That's uh, close, close, close to my heart. That position and what have you. So just, just, just take. So you start the season with with Exeter, Gloucester, Hartbury, DMP, put over a hundred points on, on them, and then and then Sale and Quins. Marks out of ten, and what can you do better? Where where can this this squad? And again, it's you know, something that Dave speaks about a lot in his in his post match interviews about a squad. Um, you know, spoke at the weekend about another 10, 15 players to come into come into the side during the Cup, cup and, and get some opportunities. Yeah. Um, where can this squad grow? I think that's the exciting bit. I think, like, even though we're performing really well at the moment, I think as players, we truly believe we've got another level to go to. So um, I'm unsure where we can get to, but I, I know for certain where we feel like we're not there yet essentially um and yeah Dave is right like there's you know it is a whole squad effort and there's some girls that we'll now see in in the cup run but they've contributed to our results so far as well and this is what um you know their contribution has made us be prepared because they push the standards in training they're um buying into everything you know, and they're bringing the energy and positivity as well in training. And that hunger from one to 40, essentially, is absolutely there. And, you know, there's no sapping or there's no negativity. It's we're all on the same page. We want to achieve the same thing. And that is absolutely huge. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, we're building our game and we're 
performing week on week and not everything has always been perfect you know we were five all against Quinns we were down for a fair amount of time against Gloucester Harpery but I, what I also think is how comfortable we are in in playing our game but also not panicking um, and managing then to see out results at the end of it um, so maybe you know if we manage to start a little bit better or break sides down earlier who knows where where we can go as well. Well, wow. have you set goals? Obviously, um, but but can, can publicly can we are, are we are you talking publicly about 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 top four about getting to those playoffs? Yeah, I think Dave, you know, has announced publicly that you know top four is 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 our, our aim as as Bears this year, and you know I think I think we can now maybe be started to take seriously on that based on the first five results and the performances that have gone in. So you know, as, as players, obviously we want to, we want to be in those playoffs as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, when you're when you're beating the likes of X, who I think you know, people would think will be there or thereabouts. Because the Hartbury have always been nibbling away at the uh, at the top four, and obviously the the reigning champs at home of their place. Um, when they had a few returnees and the likes of Jess Breach and, and what have you back, it's yes, yeah, serious serious contenders. Um, come on, then. It's a really weird dynamic. Got to ask. Mr. and Mrs. Coach and <laughs> sort of one of the leaders in the. Do, do they get much banter? I do hope that they do. I think we, we maybe as players give them a, a little bit of banter and a little bit of stick um, at the right moments. But uh, yeah, of I, yeah, but you know, Abby Abby's a great leader, um, a great player, and really drives the standards. And they're both very professional in in everything that they do. So, but yeah, we we obviously got to give them a little bit of stick for. Uh, you know, being married and uh, in camp. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, you don't have to do those suicides. That's fine. Yeah, no, don't worry, Abby. Yeah, no, I can see it now. No, no, yeah. I, I'm sure that is not the not the case <laughs> at all. No, it's not the case, but we do give them a bit of banter over who's boss in that in that relationship away from rugby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Glad to hear. Joan, I'm, I'm very conscious of your time. We spoke at the beginning just how how busy you are. I just just one final question for me, and uh, it would be remiss if we didn't didn't ask you about the um, you know, Wales situation. Uh, and obviously, you know, Six Nations is is not far away. Don't want to look back. There's there's no point. There's no rewind button in life. But there's some some positive news. Positive murmurings coming out um, yeah, in the address. The women's rugby was spoken about and uh, uh, almost a, f a formal apology um, was, was made to you guys and Nigel Walker's come in and, and again is publicly talking about the women and, and saying that you've got, got a lot of things wrong. Some some new coaches involved just um, yeah, on a short-term basis. But that's all really positive, isn't it? And, and you can go into camp with, with with a bit of a spring in your step, whereas possibly that might not have been the case for the last two, three years. Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, we've spoken as players, we've got to be open-minded now to the change and, and everything that is going to be presented to us um, in the short term now with interim coaches, but also longer term with head coach appointment and, and everything else that's going to happen. Um you know, obviously, it's always an honour to wear that Welsh jersey. And as I've said um, already, you know, our Welsh players are performing week in, week out for yeah. for clubs in the Allianz 15s. We've, we've absolutely got to take confidence in that, into the Welsh shirt. And I think if we do that and um, also embrace and enjoy the environment, then we're going to be in a much better place. But, you know, obviously, as players, we absolutely welcome this this change um, and taking us, us seriously and we've we've got to believe the WRU when we accept their apology but the next steps is now the hugely important thing for us in players as players but also for the future generations of women's rugby players and kids that want to come through the game the pathway and everything else so um yeah like the interim review has, has happened and the WRU acknowledged that um you know they haven't been sh shown in the best light um, and they've apologised. We've accepted that. And as you said, Johnny, the important thing now is the next steps and, and what happens from there. But, you know, we've got a, a job to do as players going into this autumn campaign. Um, we want to we wanna perform mainly. You know, it could help our confidence massively if we get some wins under our belts as well. But obviously, wins would come with performance. Um, but as individuals, and as well, I've said to the girls, you know, you've got to be confident with where you're at as players going into this campaign and how we transfer that to the Welsh shirt now is going to be huge for our success in, in the autumns and beyond. 
Yeah, absolutely. We, we all make mistakes, don't we? It's um, how you react from it. So we, yeah, we we look, we look on with great interest to to see and and those of us that that can do a little something to to hold them accountable, we'll we'll, we'll certainly do that. I know there's a podcast sprung up, isn't it, to to change bits and pieces, and and the girls are the girls are doing doing that kind of stuff and, and Philippa and what have you. So it's uh, it's all really really great. But lovely to speak to you this morning. All the best with uh, with Bristol. We, again, we continue to to look on and, and see where you can grow, and and all the very very best with Wales for the uh, autumn campaign and and going into the Six Nations. Always a pleasure to have you on the pod. No, brilliant. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all that you do for for women's rugby and beyond. So uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be on. Great stuff. You take care. All the best. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Hey, Berth, have you heard of VO? VO? Yes, VO, the sports camera that can film rugby matches out the net for a camera operator. Really? Yeah, the camera uses two 4K lenses to capture the entire pitch in 180 degrees to make sure you don't miss a single moment. Saracen's women and Wasps women already using their cameras last season. So is it just for elite sport? No, VO is, is bridging that gap berth between grassroots and elite sport with state-of-the-art camera technology, making it easy and accessible for everyone to use so that every team, big or small, can watch themselves play and develop and level up. Now that sounds like the perfect coaching tool. And it's portable. Portable? Yes, it attaches to a pri tripod which means you can set it up anywhere without the need for internet or mains connection. And do you know what best bit of it all is? Theo are offering the Women's Rugby Pod listeners £100 off a camera by using the discount code WRP100. That's WRP100 for £100 off your very own VO camera. Visit VO. Dot co. That's V-E-O dot C-O. Great to have Sean Lily Crap on the WRP. Busy lady, isn't she? But yeah, really, really positive time for her at the moment. Bristol, superb start to, to the season for them. Five from five, maximum 25 points with uh, with Saracens. And a very, very impressive Victory at the home of the champions at the weekend. If you haven't seen Sarah Burns' line break for uh, for a try, uh, then please do. Unbelievable stuff. They've got some some decent running props at Bristol, haven't they? With uh, with Simi Pam as well, um, and on the international front as well. Wales saying all the right things. Just got to make sure that goes into actual deeds. Now uh, we talk a lot on this pod, don't we, about fact and on verba. They have to put into place proper pathways, proper support for the women's programs because these girls have so much. And it's, uh, it's about treating them fairly and respect that they, they deserve. We heard from Sharon there that uh, yeah, it's personal life, the family and friends that, that, that suffers those relationships, that quality time that, to, that suffers. That's the first thing to go when, when you give so much to, to, to club and country. Uh, but uh, yes, some positive Wave some positive noises coming out of Wales, who announced their 36 player squad last week. Cheyenne Will, captain, as we have said, for the autumn test against Canada, South Africa, and Japan. Six uncapped players, a few from the uh, the Premier 15s in England, one of those being Kat Evans from Saracens, Lilian Pudiak from uh, Clanduff North, Maddie Jones from Port Harlequins, uh, another. A debutant or potential debutant in the backs, Jade Muller from Harlequins, Leanne Burnell from Pondiclan Falcons, and Flo Williams. Not the first time she's been in the squad, uh, the Wasp fly half. And the joint head coaches, Garrett Lewis and Johan Cunningham, stated they were aiming for a mix of experience and new players to aid competition and development. A time of year, isn't it, when uh, squads are being announced? Simon Middleton, the Red Roses boss, announced his 40 player squad with no less than 11 uncapped players. Sarah Byrne, uh, as you know, is back from injury. She's a fantastic form for the Bears. Notable absentee from the squad was Wasps 
centre, fly half, Olympian Meg Jones, who turned down a 15s contract to continue to play sevens instead. So Middleton did explain that players are unable now to, to switch between the two codes. Uh, Helena Rowland and Alex Matthews both switched back to 15s, which is good news for the Red Roses. Those 11 uncapped players, then I'll just rattle through them. Sadia Kabir, Moore, Connie Powell, Emily Robinson. In the back line, Holly Aitchison, they will know her from Sevens, the, uh, the Saracens midfielder. Heather Cow, the Harlequins winger. Marin Dodge from Exeter Chiefs. Lucy Packer, Flo Robinson, Emma Seng, the Gloucester fullback. And Ella Wirras, the scrum half. The only other international news I wanted to let you know about before I hand over to Nandy, who will round up everything else that's going on around the globe, was news from New Zealand. It was a far up Palmer Cup final at the weekend. Both Canterbury and Waikato, a replay of last year's final, of course, which Canterbury won in injury time, remember? So Waikato were, were very, very keen to, to get the W this time, both without their, their Blackburn stars who were preparing for the uh, Northern Hemisphere tour. But Waikato came from behind to beat last year's champions. 22 points to 20. Canterbury had both their locks in the bin after a string of ruck infringement uh, and attempted a last-ditch comeback by Waikato's defence. Ran the clock down and secured them the win after Waikato hurt, as I say, after being beaten by Canterbury in injury time last year. In the championship, man of two Cyclones entered as favourites. Winning the right to play at home after winning five from five games. Hawke Bay produced some early flair, but the Cyclones were for a force in spreading the ball to the wings and led throughout the match. The final score was Manawa 255, Hawke Bay 12. So huge congratulations to Waikato and to Manawa 2. The other huge, huge news coming out of New Zealand announced last week was the launch. The Alpiki Super Rugby League, a brand new league starting in March 2022. There are four teams confer the Blues, which is uh, the Auckland's uh, based franchise coach by Willie Walker. The Chiefs, led by ex-Blackfern Sevens coach Alan Bunting. The Hurricanes, led by ex-Blackfern's coach Wesley Clark. A combined South Island team governed by the Crusaders. And that is going to be coached by Canterbury's Farrah Palmer coach, Blair Baxter. The league is aimed to reflect a stepping stone between the Farrah Palmer Cup and the Blackburns, with Alpiki translating to the ascent to the uppermost realm. Rather appropriate, isn't it? Squads will be 28 player and due to be selected later in the month. Now, over to Nandi Butelezi for the rest of the news around the overworld. USA Rugby launched the Premier Rugby Sevens on Saturday in Memphis, the first professional Rugby Sevens tournament. With paid parity between men's and women's, in the women's tournament, teams included the Loonies, Loggerheads, Headliners and Experts. In the final, Loonies 28, 14 Headliners and in the third place playoff, Experts 5, 30 loggerheads. West Asia 7s The United Arab Emirates have won the third West Asia 7s beating Qatar, winners of the first two tournaments in 2018 and 2019 in the final. Hosted in Doha, Qatar, after original host Lebanon had to pull out due to COVID, the tournament saw UAE, Syria, Iraq, Qatar and Iran. It was Iraq's first appearance as a Test 7 side, making it the 144th country to debut. In the bronze medal match, Iran beat Syria 5-0. And in the final, United Arab Emirates beat Qatar 41-0. Tunisia, Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire will make their Test debuts in a triangular tournament starting in Tunis this weekend. The matches are as follows. 9 October, Tunisia vs Senegal. 13 October, Senegal vs Cote d'Ivoire. 17 October, Tunisia versus Cote d'Ivoire. 
Under the confusing banner of the Africa Cup, which is ongoing, it's an opportunity to assist the teams and give an opportunity to as many teams as possible to showcase their talent before an adequate competition format is designed for next year's qualification to the W15 competition. Tunisia beat Senegal 14-3 on both of their debuts, making them the 67th and 68th countries respectively to play women's test rugby. Player of the match went to Tunisia's fly half, Ameni Ben Salem, who scored a first half try and performed kicking duties. Results for Elite 1. In Pool A, Stade Francais Paris 15, 10 Lons. Stade Toulousier 44, 5 ASM Rugbana. Stade Rene 36, 24 FC Grenoble Amazons. And in Pool B, Lille 17, 34 Stade Bordelais. Montpellier RC 18, 10 Black Neck. AS Bayonnaise 13, 15 Lyon. Stade Toulousier extend the top of the table lead of Pool A, same as Montpellier in Pool B. Next week fixtures Pool A Lens vs. Stade Toulousier, Babogny vs. Stade Francais, ASM Rupena vs. Stade Rene, and in Pool B Black Neck vs. Bayonnaise. Bordeaux vs. Montpellier, Chile Marazin vs. Lille. Ipedora Round 3. Grat Residencia 33, 26, San Cuga. Olimpico de Pozello 29, 0, Sanse Scrum. Eba Taldia 40, 38, Mahalande. Complutense Cisneros 20, 0, Cotiva Cocos. In the Air or Island League, Balancolic 31, 17, Galvegians, Black Rock College 63, 0, Wilklow RFC, Malone 0, 0, Railway Union RFC, Suetonians 28, 12, Cook, UI Bohemian 46, 17, Old Belvedere. This means Old Railway Union lose their top of the table spot to UI Bohemian who lead with 15 points. Nadi Butchale there with the international news. And uh, Nadi will be with us every single week to go through the international news. Great to have her on board. Yeah, she brings a real buzz and an energy to the WRP, doesn't she? Another lady who has brought buzz and energy. And that's not just because she's named after a computer game hedgehog. Uh, but Sonia Green, the Saracen better known as Sonic, made her 300th appearance for Saracens at the weekend. We just had to get her on the pod this week. Here's Sonic. It is a massive, massive welcome times 300, I guess, to, <laughs> uh, to Sonic. Uh, how you. are you, Sonia? Lovely, lovely to have you on the pod. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a, it's a late call, um, but we just we absolutely had to mark what was an unbelievable milestone at the weekend. Certainly, don't look old enough to have three hundred appearances. But uh, are you? Are, <laughs> saying I look good for three hundred. <laughs> are those are the the, the, the three hundred balloons behind you? Yeah. Are they? There's some of them. I mean, they're everywhere. They were in the changing rooms. They were in the stadium. I think I should probably shouldn't say this because we're damaging the environment, but I think some got released. But these ones ended up back at school. So I'm at school at the moment. And um, these ones, yeah, I couldn't fit these on the tube, unfortunately. So they're still here. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm, yeah, I'm just happy we beat Exeter, actually, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, it's not it wasn't I mean it was an amazing, amazing day, but it's not just about me. It wasn't about me. That was um obviously the season like every season is super important and Exeter is a big game for Saracens. There's a big club rivalry there. Um it was the, this time last year, if we rewind a year, our first game against Exeter, we lost our first game since twenty eighteen against them away. Um and that was a big game for them as well. It was their first year in the premiership. Uh, with a women's team so yeah it was a really sort of big occasion and then sort of per on a personal level it was my first game I hadn't been picked for Saracens in about 19 seasons so it was a big old day for me I was water girl I was a non-playing reserve so I was there first game never picked 
So fast forward a year, very different day. Yeah, very, very different day. Uh, very different, different result. But I mean, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's so you to be talking about Saracens first and foremost, rather than yourself. When I ask how you are, and then you go straight to Saracens, it's, it's very typically you, and and why you're so, so admired and, and liked within within the game. Um, but I am gonna, I am going to um, hammer the point. It looked like a really, really special day. Forget Saracens, just you. It seemed like a really special day, and people had just you know, resemble what I just said. They, they made a huge amount of effort because um, you mean a great deal to, to them and the club. Did, did you feel rightfully special? I, d- I did, very much so, um, right from the start. And then the build-up in the week uh, was pretty intense. Uh, as you know, I'm the vice principal at Saracens High School. And at school at the moment, yep. you can see there's lots of Saracens badges everywhere, um, which is great. And I'm very, very proud to say I'll teach here. But... Um, it's also a bit of a, um, a colliding of two worlds. You know, I've got all of the families and the kids and uh, staff telling me they're coming to my 300th game and I hadn't actually even been picked yet because we don't find out about selection until Wednesday. And, and although I've played every game this season, I, you know, I'm at a point in my career where, like last season, I spent a lot of time on the bench. As I said, I, my first game not being picked was Exeter. So, um, yeah, it was a big week. And then to find out I had been set and I was starting... Um, super excited um, and I, I run a, a girls and a boys rugby club here so Friday night after school loads of kids at rugby club all very excited that they're coming to the game on Sunday um, but obviously I just needed to focus on my performance and the team performance and work on everything we needed to improve from the weekend before against Worcester so it was a big week but yeah when I got there literally from the second I arrived I had there were so many amazing messages, um, ex players, like lots of the old girls, um, even my first coach, Lee Adamson, who used to play for Saracens himself, he sent a message in. Um the the team made me feel very special, um, having like the guard of honor with the kids as I ran out. And at the end, just seeing so many friends and family there was amazing. Oh, awesome. Well, you deserve uh, all all of it, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if Alex hadn't have picked you, I, I think he probably should have emigrated or something because um, I'm not sure people would have uh, would have accepted that. Perhaps. But yeah. I, I mean, 300 games is an extraordinary amount, and 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 say Lottie Clapp may get to that, or, or or a back three player is one thing, but to play in the position you did, you sort of slowly moving your way up. up up, yeah, perhaps, who knows? Perhaps in five years' time, you might be playing hooker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to, to move from like a combative flank, as you, you were in, into the second row a little bit now as well. I mean, that, that's has it sort of dawned on you just what an incredible achievement it is? Mm, Not sunk in yet. No, I don't think so. I just a lot of people have been asking me how, and. Um, I think I've been like, I'm being really honest, probably not, not a very exciting answer, but I think it's just from training really hard. Like anyone that knows me, I'm not the most skillful player. You know, never have been. When I was playing England sevens, um, Mike Friday used to say, there's piano players and piano pushers, and you're definitely a piano pusher. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not the most skillful. I know that, but I am, I, like, I know that I work hard. I've got really good work rate. I work hard off the pitch, work hard on the pitch. I put my body on the line for everyone. And um, so I think, yeah, just training really, really hard and, and eating well. Like, again, that's a really boring answer. I'm sorry, but just like looking after my body. Um, and I think that's the reason I'm still able to play at this level. Um, you know, I've got the joints of a 90 year old because of it. But yeah, I'm just look after my body. <laughs> it's certainly all the hairstyle of a 90 year old. Um, so the um, with the <laughs> motivation then. I mean, you say training well, um, that's unbelievable, isn't it? I, I used that phrase on Sunday when I was coaching my little team. Uh, Mike Friday's words get everywhere, don't they? Um, that motivation then to to continually train well, to continually look after your body. When you have so many other pressures, you know, you're vice principal of a, of a school, which is incredibly absorbing job, I'm sure. Where does that motivation then come from? just like a desire to be the best um yeah I just I just everything that I do I just want to be the best I possibly can be um and again it's a bit 
I know you probably think I'm just saying it because I work at Saracens, but we talk a lot about the values at Saracens and we talk to the children at the school about the values and just like that work rate, being disciplined, um, like being honest when stuff is going wrong and, and showing humility and like learning from mistakes. And so I know, I, I know you think, oh, you know, you're just saying that because you work there, but I, I like truly believe in it and um, I'm really buying into that. And I just, I think you've got to be a little bit obsessive to be a good athlete. <laughs> you've got to obsess about your training obsess about wanting to get things be right get it right and be better um i love line outs as you know like you know i've been leading the line outs the last few and some people in training this week they're like oh i hate line outs and i'm, I'm stood there like i absolutely love this just want to do more want to get it right um i love watching the line outs of the opposition um i love watching the line outs of the men's on saturday before our game and going okay that's not how to do it <laughs> and then getting it better on Saturday for us you know so you've got to have a be disciplined and have a little bit of an obsessive behavior to be motivated to get up every morning five o'clock gym into school normal day's work and then train at the end of the day absolutely extraordinary engine absolutely extraordinary do you do you remember I know that I only keep you for a couple more questions before we possibly just have a, a little a little round up of, of the weekend with you if you're happy to to, to stay on. But mm -hmm. two kind of more questions just just, just about yourself. So, do you remember your, your your first game? I wish I could. I remember. I mean, I know what it was like at Bramley Road. So if you if anyone's a Sarri supporter, they'll remember the men used to train at Bramley Road. Um, yeah. So when I mean, we used to try and nick their kit they left in the changing rooms because we didn't get any. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I remember Bramley Road. I mean, we. A lot of the old girls were joking about it you know you do a pitch inspection because obviously it was a park where people walk their dogs um there was one little stand you know there's one little stand and there'd be people sat in the stands i don't know drinking whatever in the evenings and um yeah it was very different then um i played for the two so i worked my way up from sari's second team and i just i just remember i knew that i was playing england under 19 i knew that if i wanted to better my england career um then I needed to move to a premiership club. I'm, you know, I'd heard great things about Saracens. I had some role models there, like people that I looked up to, players that I looked up to, coaches. And I just knew that if I wanted to be successful, I had to like keep playing on a muddy pitch in the field in Bramley Road to to improve. And despite that, you know, we were top of the league like year on year, and and sort of, and we we're always at the top, whether we're top or second. You know, we continue to do so. Um, and just some, I learned from some incredible, incredible players that were not full time, but were professional with a small p, um, great international players. And it's thanks to them that I'm where I am today. Is there one game that stands out for you? Or is that um, just a, to me? Saracens or England? Saracens. You're asking Saracens. Um, so I am Saracens. Yeah, Saracens. Uh, pretty much every game I've ever played against Richmond. I know Richmond are no longer in the Premiership. But there's there's been a, there's some really yeah some nail biters against uh, Richmond that stick in my memory. But I think the probably the most recent one in the Premier 15s would have to be that game against Quinns. It was away at Quinns. You might remember it. Um, yeah. Just before COVID, we were top of the league that season. I know, obviously, in the end, it was null and void. Um, uh, yeah. We were 24, 26 points down. I think we just scored just at half time. So we went in, it was like 26-5 at half time to Quinns. And we came back to, to win it. Apparently it was one of the biggest ever comebacks in Premiership Rugby, men's or women's. So I think that would have to be one of my best memories playing for Saracens. Unbelievable. Not not the, not the all the all the titles, the league titles, or the Premiership wins. No, no, the team performance coming back. I mean, it, it, oh. so many answers have totally and utterly summed you up. But you like, should have you should have heard the team talk at half time from Alex Osterbury. That was probably the best bit. <laughs> and also, I can't repeat what he said. I, I was going to say, yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of bleeping going on. There was, but that that's probably what did it. That's what helped turn it around. Wow. And, and outside of that, have you, have you got a, what sort of, is there a favourite moment, um, a favourite after game kind of dinner or a pre-season tour? or Sunday. Or one little, Two Sunday. days ago. How lovely. Yeah. If you'd have asked me last week, I'd have said winning the World Series, like playing in Hong Kong in front of 50,000 people, like I would have given you those moments. But yeah, Sunday, getting my 300th game for Saracens, that was 
I'm still on a high. It was a bit of a crash back to reality Monday morning back in school. But um, yeah, <laughs> giving out detentions or something. We don't give out detentions here, Johnny. <laughs> So it's, that's very old school, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a green green pen, not a red pen nowadays. That's yeah, right, absolutely. something like that. Yeah. Indeedy, so. Oh, well, well, brilliant. And I, I, as I said earlier, you, lots and lots of glory is coming your way, and um, so that so they should. Um, if there's an example of a of a female rugby player that um, any young lady or woman is is listening to this pod, um, then just look back at uh, this lady's career and it's a fine, fine example of how to conduct yourself on and off the field. So huge, huge congratulations from, from myself and everyone at the, the, the WRP. Um, a brilliant okay. milestone. Um, I just wanted, if you've got a moment or two, just to go through the rest of the results with you, just get your kind of take on, there's literally nobody more experienced playing at the moment to talk us through sort of the teams. Um, we just go through and just just talk about the results. Sale got their first win of the season, 31-0 against DMP. Uh, we're worried about DMP, are we? I, it's, 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 it's... Hey, look, there. yeah, I mean, every every year we say we're worried about them. It's, um... Oh, just give me a second. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, this is what happens when you're working in a school. <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> Not to worry. So I'm sorry for their detention. No, yeah, no, no. probably. I was a member of staff. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think if on paper that it's not looking good, is it? But I mean, when we played against them, in I know the score was was huge, but you know they're a decent side. They're a physical yeah. team. They're a young team. Um, but they, yeah, they they've got so much potential. But I don't know. I don't know what what more to say. Um, I'm not surprised at the result. I would have expected Sale to put a little bit more on them, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think time's going to run out for them, isn't it? Um, mm. For for them to develop Worcester. Yeah, wow. Well, I said so. I spoke to Joe Yap after the game. We ha obviously we played them previous week. I said to them, "I think you're going to do it. I think you're going to beat Loughborough." Um, obviously, we played Loughborough the week before. Again, a good side, but lots of young players. We've had a few players from us from last season have moved there. Um, I expected. The, the game was tough, but I expected more from them out, from the backs. I mean, their backs are outstanding in Loughborough. But after we played them and then playing Worcester, I was like, yeah, Worcester can do this. So I was expecting Worcester to get the win. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a good game. It was. Yeah, for 18-14. Um, yeah, predicted Worcester win there as well. Yeah. Laura Keats, great great to see Laura Keats back. Yeah, see um, her back. I saw her after the game. It was great. Yeah, great to see her back. Back playing. Uh, and Yamamoto kicked the first ever point to a Japanese player in the Premier 15s. A little bit of history there. Yeah. Bristol. Huge Bristol. result. Yeah. And the home of the champions, 24-5. I cannot wait to play Bristol. Everyone's saying, <laughs> I cannot wait to play them. Um, wow. Yeah, like winning, you know, Quinns at home. I, again, like none of these scores this weekend, but maybe even ours, but I was, you know, I could have predicted. I thought Bristol could do it. And um, I'm really pleased for them as a, if, I, if I'm being a neutral I think it's you know it's good for the game. It's good for Great. good for them to see them winning. Um, but uh, yeah, if I put my Saris hat on, it's always good to get a win against Quinns. But I'm excited. I'm excited to play both of them. But really excited to play Bristol now after that yeah. that performance. And there was some excellent tries there. Really interesting tries as well. Watching on the highlights reel. Yeah, um, I have a, a statement. That's five from five from from then now. Wasps, mm -hmm. uh, their double header up at the uh, you know, Coventry Building Whatever. Society yeah, Arena, yeah, yeah. Um, up at Cov. Um, Thirty four twenty five. I thought that was going to be closer. Yeah, I thought it'd be closer. Although you know, it's an it's an occasion for them, isn't it? It's a big it's a big it's a big yeah. season for Wasps yeah, yeah. women now becoming part of Wasps and um, getting that double header. I know a lot of the girls were excited about that, and they've got some. England players, GB players back in. So the squad was slightly different. Um, so, yeah, again, not surprised about the result. Um, you'd, you'd hope that was, uh, that Wasp would raise that occasion. Yeah, absolutely. And and then um, your result, 31-19. Wow, Exeter, yeah. Again, um, I, again, I'm surprised at the, the margin. It was one of those, when we do our predictions every week on, on, on here, and I had three in the balance, and I, and I thought, you know, Worcester will, and I, I should have gone Bristol as well. But I, I thought, I was um and eyeing with Exeter, um, yeah. but 31-19, that's, that's a properly properly good result against a, a yeah, what is this for, yeah, it's a formidable side now. Yeah, and they're, they're outstanding. I mean, you think about the amount of internationals they've got in their team, um, mm. Canadians, Americans, 
Uh, they are big physical players. They are well drilled. You know, they had um, Amy Garnett last year, Susie Appleby last year and this year. They've got some excellent coaching team around them. Good setup there. Um, and they play like, I think Poppy said it after the game, you know, they play the Exeter way. Um, but yep. we just, well, we smothered them. I know they scored first, but after that we smothered them and it, we just we clicked and like we've we as you know we're always a bit slow to get started at Saracens, um, <laughs> but this season not this like the last few weeks we've actually started really positively. So I know that they got the first try, but after that it was a bit of a wake up call. Um, so so yeah, obviously uh, it was a very ner big nerve wracking week for me, but I was also equally nervous because I know how good Exeter are and what a great side they are. Let's give it. Let's have a. Let's finish off then. Your prediction for the top four: Saracen number one. Let's 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 get that out the road. Yeah, Bristol. Yeah. Exeter. Yeah. Wasps. Whoa! You heard it here first. That been great. Get yourself with every Harlequins fan there. Yeah. And I'm sure you don't mind a bit. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. That's what I'm saying at the moment. Yeah. No. It's. It's. Oh, look. As you said, a couple of these. 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 These results going possibly not the predicted way is is brilliant for the league. Brilliant for the game. Uh, it really is because we don't yeah. want just uh, you and Quinn's drifting away at the top. Um, as has been the the way in in past seasons. Sonic, we will let you get back to school. Uh, get back to your balloons and the students. <laughs> and just thank you so much for coming on. Had to mark it. Um, always loved um, commentating on you uh, and watching you through the years and let's hope there's uh, a fair form you a fair few more performances in you yet thanks johnny much okay. appreciated you take care cheers Alec. bye now great to have sonic on the pod into the english second tier no championship games last weekend but there's a Full round of fixtures this weekend. Up north, Kenilworth travel to Cheltenham. Field Waterloo host Barnsley. Harrogate take on West Park. Leeds, Litchfield take on Sefton. And Loughborough Town host Nova Castrians. Down south, Bar take on the Supermarines. Blackheath take on Old Albanians. Buckingham are up at Henley. While well, Reading Abbey on the third and Hove host Richmond. That's about it for another jam packed women's rugby pod. Exciting time, isn't it? As the, uh, the English League takes a, a break, the Fire Power Cup, and then all eyes now turning on to the international game. As uh, so New Zealand come up here, and we've got loads of international rugby to bring you as well. And we'll be with you every step of the way. Under a year now until that World Cup. And yes, we will, we will be with you every step of the way, bringing you all the latest developments, chatting to all the relevant people all the way right the way through to the, uh, the World Cup itself. Shout outs this week then. Bedford Blues women. Took on Shelford second 15 at Goldington Road. Shelford Nomads also their first league game, incidentally. Uh, and start as you mean to go on because Bedford Blues women won 31 nil. Really said a huge congratulations in person to Sonia Green, but it's worth making that again. 300 appearances for Saracens. Wow. International test debuts for Tunisia. They were the 67th nation to do that. Senegal, the 68th. And Iraq, the 144th for sevens. Shout out to Umbro as well. The England, New England kit was released last week with a bespoke design for the women, completely separate from the men. It looked very nice too. A huge big up to Royal Mail. Have you seen the stamps that have been released to the uh, 150th anniversary of the RFU? Stamps featuring players such as Emily Scarrett, Sophie Spence, Kim Littlejohn, Melissa Berry as well. Uh, you haven't got hold of mine yet, but um, wow, women's rugby on stamps. Whatever next. Perhaps people in the game as well. Who knows? Huge congratulations to Leanne Riley and to Matt and Nuptials at the weekend. 
a two-day honeymoon and then straight back into England camp. Uh, but yeah, huge congratulations to the Red Roses scrum half who got married at the weekend. It was a World Mental Health Day on Sunday. Uh, and I just want to say how proud we are here on the WRP to be associated with Brave Mind uh, Mental Health Charity, the Mental Health Charity, actually, actually, um, what they set out to do, what they launched with some time ago now by putting a mental health expert, first aider, as it were, into every rugby club around Britain. Others have jumped on that bag and, and following suit as well. But uh, yeah, Brave Mind, do give them a follow, do give them a, a support in, in any way that you can. But a huge thank you, as ever, to our guests, to Shine Early Crap, to Sonic, to you, the listeners. Thank you very much for, for all your support. If you haven't subscribed or your friends haven't subscribed, then, then do hit that subscribe button. Pop a little five-star rating in there as well. The, the machine doesn't accept anything but a five-star rating, so just hit the five stars. Um, and check out our YouTube channel as well. Um, we've also got Stash. Should you uh, want a full range of women's rugby pod Stash there for you, if you so wished? Uh, and the address for that is www.horbro.com forward slash WRP. There's and all sorts in there. There's beanies, there's caps, there's training vests, there's leggings, um, and of course, you know, for women's kit as well. Um, it's not just Umbro who can do that. We can do it here on the WRP as well. Huge thank to the team. Find this ugly mug to, to Sean, to Tom and to Blue Bell. And a huge welcome to Nandi Butelezi. Great to have her on board. Uh, and we look forward to, to her presence on the pod growing as the weeks go on. But enjoy your week and we will see you next time. Until then, add more substance and less spectacle to your life. <laughs>